Hi everyone, it's Adriana, and today we're going to be making three kinds of mocha bombs. These are all Starbucks inspired, so we'll start off with the toasted white chocolate mocha by making our own caramelized white chocolate. Then we'll make the wonderful peppermint mocha using a really cool present mold. And then we'll finish off with the classic cafe mocha filled with a deep dark espresso ganache. I had so much fun filming this video for you all and I have a lot of new things to show you, but definitely stay tuned till the end where I will show you what each one of these look like when you melt them. So to make the toasted white chocolate mocha. This is what the drink looks like when you buy it. It has espresso, steamed milk, caramelized white chocolate, whipped cream, sugar sparkles, and crispy white pearls on top. So the first thing that we're going to go over is how to make this caramelized white chocolate. So I've never seen this technique done on compound chocolate before, but I was kind of messing around with white chocolate and hopefully I can show you something brand new and it makes your house smell amazing. The results are so delicious and caramelly. Okay, so to begin, take eight ounces of white compound chocolate, put it in a microwave safe bowl and microwave on high power for 30 seconds. Give it a good stir, then put it back in the microwave for another 30 seconds and stir again. And after about 15 to 20 more seconds in the microwave, the chocolate should be nice and melted. Now we're going to start our caramelization steps. We're going to heat the chocolate now on 15 second intervals, stirring between every step. I'm going to add a little counter in the bottom left hand corner of this video so you can see how many times we're heating it for 15 seconds. So this procedure is pretty repetitive and it's going to take about 5 minutes total. So in the meantime, I'm going to tell you what's going on. So you're going to notice that as you heat your compound chocolate up, it gets thicker, which is counterintuitive at least it is to me, that when you heat something up, it should get more fluid or thinner. As this chocolate gets hotter, the fats kind of collect and it turns into almost like a soft butter mixture first, and then it almost has a soft granular feel to it. So don't freak out if you see these things as you're working through this process. Just follow along with the video and keep stirring, stirring, stirring. And near the end, when you're done, you'll see that you'll reach that really beautiful caramel color. And as the temperature decreases to around 100 degrees, which is the ideal work temperature for Merkins, it'll maintain that fluidity that we're used to when making these hot chocolate bombs. So I originally saw this idea on Cupcake Gemma's channel and she makes a caramelized white chocolate using real white chocolate so it does have cocoa butter in it. And most other tutorials I see, they emphasize the fact that you should always use a high quality white chocolate with a high ratio of cocoa butter in it. Now we're going to hop on the other side of the spectrum and use something with no cocoa butter in it at all. And the reason they probably say that with real white chocolate chocolate is because the cocoa butter probably adds flavor and texture. The key player in anything that we caramelize is essentially sugar. If you think about it, we caramelize onions all the time, so why shouldn't we be able to caramelize a compound chocolate that has a lot of sugar in it? The other really cool thing about using compound chocolate with this technique is that we never have to temper it, so meaning we can raise it up to this insanely high temperature, bring it back down again to its working temperature, and just use it for our hot chocolate bombs. So what that means is if you wanted to use this technique using real chocolate, you'd have to temper it, probably using something like a table method where you'd pour all of the melted chocolate onto a marble slab, then scrape it around until it reduces the temperature such that the cocoa butter crystals can build up from scratch. So we are now on heating step 14, and as you can see, we have a really beautiful caramel color. You could probably go deeper than this, but I've been reading that you basically want to achieve a color that looks like natural peanut butter, which I think we've basically achieved here. And now since the chocolate is super hot, before using it, we have to leave it out at room temperature to reach about 100 degrees. And for 8 ounces of chocolate heating this long, that took me about 35 to 40 minutes. Minutes. And to summarize, that took 17 15 second heating steps with a total time of 4 minutes and 15 seconds plus the initial 1 minute and 20 seconds for the first melting step. You could also pour your prepared caramelized chocolate on parchment paper like I did here, let it harden, and then break it up into little pieces when you're ready to use it. Now, if you're familiar with making hot chocolate bombs using compound chocolate, the process is going to be nearly identical. There's only one difference when using this caramelized white chocolate, and that is the dried caramelized chocolate is a little bit more brittle than the pure compound chocolate. So I would say to be extra diligent about making sure that your sides are double coated so that it doesn't crack when you take them out of the mold. Alright, so pour about one to two tablespoons of your caramelized white chocolate into each cavity of your mold. 
Use a small spoon to completely cover the interior surface. Once everything's thoroughly covered, go ahead and turn the entire mold over and dump out all of the excess chocolate. Use a flat knife or an offset spatula to tidy up the edges. Use a small paintbrush to cover up any bald spots and bring up the edges so that they're nice and thick. So remember we did caramelize the sugar so it's going to be a little bit more ooey gooey kind of sticky and I found that when I was doing this step it tends to dry a lot quicker as well. Place it on a pan in the fridge for about five minutes and then bring it back out and do another coat only on the sides. Once they're nice and firm from that second coating, remove them from the mold by gently pushing up from the bottom, which is typically the thickest part for the ones that you dry right side up. And let me show you what I do when I miss a spot. So I missed a bald spot on one of these and it cracked when I took it out. So what I do to fix this, and it's not gonna be a perfect you know, looking sphere, but for my purposes, it's typically okay. I just put it back in the mold, remelt some more of that compound chocolate and then paint over it to kind of create a patch. Then let that sit in the fridge for another five minutes, take it out and it should be good to go. Now you can tidy up the edges with a warm pan to make sure that they're all even. So the drink is mainly caramelized white chocolate and espresso, so we're gonna use one to two tablespoons of instant espresso powder per bomb. And then add a few marshmallows to each half. And for final assembly, just take your empty half and slightly melt the edges in your warm pan. You're also gonna pick up a little bit more of that melted chocolate from cleaning up the edges from before, then push it onto your filled half until they're stuck together. And to decorate, I just melted some regular white chocolate, drizzled it over the top, then added some red sprinkles, and those are Calibo crisp pearls to kind of mimic the pearls in the drink. All right, so for peppermint mocha, we have espresso, steamed milk, a mocha sauce, peppermint flavored syrup, whipped cream, and dark chocolate curls. Pretty straightforward, and we are going to use a compound chocolate to make this hot cocoa bomb. And for these next two bombs, I'm going to try to answer a lot of common questions that you all are asking. So start off with six to eight ounces of compound milk chocolate in your microwave safe bowl. Microwave on high power for 30 seconds and then give it a good stir. Microwave again for another 30 seconds and stir it until it's completely melted. And for these bombs, I'm going to use this mold that I got from NYK. I'm going to just use the spherical present like molds. The square ones won't really fit into a mug, so I'm definitely going to use that for another project maybe later on but for these hot chocolate bombs we're just going to go after the ones on the side and if you have a brand new mold like I do here and I didn't show it in this video but what you're going to want to do is kind of give your mold a little workout meaning push it out and in and kind of bend the mold to make sure it's nice and loose so that you can invert it really easily to get the chocolate out. So for these circular present style molds, I still poured about one to two tablespoons of the compound chocolate into each cavity, then use the back of the spoon to spread it around. Then flip your mold upside down to drain out all of the excess chocolate. Clean up the edges with your offset spatula, then go in with a paintbrush, making sure that you get the edges really nice and thick. Allow these to dry in the fridge for at least five to 10 minutes. And these pop out pretty easily. As long as you've cleaned up the edges really nice, you can separate the mold from the sides and then push up directly from the bottom to get the entire piece out. And to fill these, we're just gonna use instant coffee granules. I know that sometimes that espresso powder is hard to find, so you could just use coffee granules like this or even the little Starbucks Via packets if you want. And for the peppermint flavor, I went over this in another video, but there are several ways to put a peppermint flavor in your hot cocoa bombs. I think the easiest way is to just find a peppermint hot cocoa mix if you have access to it. If you don't, you can use peppermint oil to flavor the chocolate before you put them in their molds. Then go ahead and add the marshmallows of your choice. I'm adding my homemade marshmallows again, but you could also do peppermint marshmallows if you really wanted to go all in with peppermint. And so I forgot to tidy up the sides on both of these hemispheres before putting them together. I only did that one side that you're seeing right now. And when you forget to kind of make sure that everything is all straight along the edges, it often leads to more gaps, but it ended up being okay for me. What you can do if you have just tiny little hairline gaps, you can take a little bit of chocolate and see how I just put some on my finger. These are for my family, so it doesn't really matter. You can use a paintbrush if you're doing this for professional reasons and you can just kind of clean up the sides so that there are no holes. And to decorate these, I'm gonna use Wilton's gold metallic cake paint. So just give it a good stir before you use it. And I find that less is actually better with these, especially against the dark background of chocolate. So you just give a really light dusting using a paintbrush wherever you want, and it shows up really beautifully, all the little glittery sparkles. 
Okay, for the last drink, we have the Cafe Mocha Hot Cocoa Balm. This one is just gonna have espresso and chocolate. So we're gonna go all in with the espresso flavor and a bittersweet mocha sauce. So we're gonna sub a very dark chocolate bar. So we can use all real chocolate for this bob and then add that to some steamed milk. And for the intense chocolate flavor, we're gonna use a ganache to fill these bombs. So start off with 150 grams of heavy cream in a small saucepan. And while you allow that to heat up, go ahead and chop up 150 grams of your favorite dark chocolate bar. And once you see that your cream is steaming hot and you can kind of see some bubbles along the perimeter of your pan, turn off your heat source and then add all of your chopped chocolate and allow that to sit in the steaming hot cream for about five minutes. Then give it a good stir with a spatula and you'll see that it goes from something really muddy looking into a ganache which is going to be very smooth and shiny. Add two tablespoons of instant espresso powder to your ganache and stir that in very well. Set that aside to cool completely before filling your bombs. So I'm gonna be using real chocolate for my hot chocolate bombs, which means I have to temper it. If you're more comfortable with compound chocolate, that's fine, you can use that for these bombs as well. These are Calibo Calais, which just come in these little discs, so it makes them easy to measure and easy to melt uh, more evenly. This is a type of covered chocolate, which essentially means to cover in French. And what that means is that it has a higher proportion of cocoa butter than other types of chocolate so that it's really easy to melt and cover or enrobe things or to fill molds with. So what I'm doing is a microwave seeding method. So I divided my chocolate into two bowls. I have six ounces in the large red bowl, which I'm microwaving first. And I set aside two ounces in that little glass bowl. So I started off with 30 seconds, then gave it a good stir. And then I did another 30 seconds and this is what the chocolate looks like. So I'll continue to stir and then I'm gonna put it in the microwave for about another 15 to 20 seconds to thoroughly melt all of the chocolate in this red bowl. So this is what the chocolate looks like after one minute and 15 seconds of heating on high power. So I'm just gonna stir to melt everything all together and then pour in my reserved seeding chocolate in the glass bowl. Now I realized that my melted chocolate was at a very high temperature, so I was able to dump in all of my chocolate and I'm gonna be able to bring the temperature down just fine. But normally what you would wanna do is just gradually pour in that two ounces or seeding chocolate. Make sure that's melted before you add in the next part and next part until it's all done. That's the typical way to do it. Keep stirring and stirring and this is going to bring the temperature of the chocolate down to about 88 degrees. 88 to 92 degrees is the ideal working temperature for this particular dark chocolate. When you're using a fancy chocolate like this it'll usually indicate the temperatures for you on the bag so I'm aiming for about 88 to 89 degrees. And you always want to test your tempered chocolate before you start working with it so dip some parchment paper in the chocolate, allow it to sit on your countertop for about five minutes. The Exposed surface should be nice and matte and should have a firm feel to it. All right, and we're gonna use tempered chocolate in the same way that we use compound chocolate. So fill your molds, dump out the excess chocolate, use an offset spatula to clean up the sides, and then use a paintbrush to clean up any bald spots. So I've gotten a few comments about how I dry these spheres. And so I'm gonna try to dry them upside down this time. So what you do, make sure that the chocolate is a little bit on the drier side, flip it upside down on top of a wire rack and place that on a parchment lined baking sheet. Allow that to dry in the fridge for no more than five minutes. So this is what they look like when they dry upside down. I definitely noticed that the sides are a little bit thicker and a little bit straighter. I think the one thing you have to remember is allow your chocolate to kind of harden at room temperature a little bit longer than you would before placing it in the fridge so that it doesn't drip out while it's upside down. Other than that, great suggestion. I actually might be using this method from now on. And I did get a few comments that that would prevent me from having to clean up the sides like I'm doing here, but I like to do this step anyways because it creates kind of a ledge on the perimeter of the spheres. And so it just gives you a little bit more when you push the two halves together so that they stick. All right, so now we're gonna fill half of our shells with that super chocolatey espresso ganache. And then go ahead and just top with some marshmallows. And what I'm finding is that the fresher your marshmallows are, meaning homemade, the more they melt on top of your drink. And so it kind of mimics that whipped cream that you would get on top of a mocha. If you wanna buy pre-made marshmallows, that's usually just fine. They'll actually just keep their shape a little more. So it's up to you. So let's go ahead and assemble these bombs. And I've been getting questions about how not to get fingerprints on your bombs or how come the bombs don't melt when I hold them in my hand. 
I naturally just have very cold hands. It's so bad to the point where in the winter time when I'm doing a lot of programming, I have to wear fingerless gloves. But if you have warm hands or perhaps you live in a warm climate, I think gloves will really help you because it's going to mitigate the effect of your body temperature on chocolate and particularly real chocolate, which has a lower melting temperature than compound chocolate. So that's also another way to get around it. Compound chocolate has a higher melting temperature. And so if you want to work with that, it's also going to be easier in that regard. Okay, so to melt these bombs, I actually do get questions about what kind of liquid to use. Can you use water? Can you use soy milk? I don't like to drink milk, those sorts of things. It really doesn't matter what kind of liquid you use as long as it's hot. I even saw a recipe the other day that uses hot wine. Milk is super classic, but counterintuitively, milk actually softens the flavor of chocolate. Softens or kind of like deadens the flavor of chocolate. Coffee enhances the flavor of chocolate. And water is actually really good with chocolate, which is why water is often used in chocolate cakes because it brings out the chocolate flavor. So here you can see that I'm letting the bomb go in a cup of hot coffee and that will just turn into a mocha and actually give you a really strong coffee flavor but as long as the liquid that you're using is hot you can pretty much use it 